Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the application of biotechnology in the field of agriculture. There are many interesting things the scientists have achieved in the biotechnology field. So, let us see what are the content you are going to deal today. We will start with how BT gene, nematode growth hormone gene, herodin gene, PG gene, beta carotene gene are genetically modified using RDNA technology. Application of biotechnology in the field of agriculture. Genetically engineering crops have desirable genes incorporated in them. Genetically modified crops have more tolerance to abiotic stress such as cold, drought, salinity, heat. They help in producing insects and pest resistance. They help in reducing post harvesting loss. They have the efficiency of mineral usage by plant. At last, they help in enhancing nutritional value. Example, vitamin A rich rice, which we will be seeing in the last slide. Let us talk about Bt gene. Bt stands for the name of the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis is a gram positive spore forming soil bacteria. The bacteria have a gene called Bt gene. It is also called cry gene which is present in the megaplasmid. Cry gene can be written in two forms. If it is written in italics, it means we are talking about a gene. So it has to be underlined. If it is written in a simple form, we will be talking about the protein. Cry gene synthesizes a protein called crystalline protein. The Bt gene undergoes transcription and translation to produce this crystalline protein. It dissolves in alkaline pH. When the cry protein dissolves in alkaline pH, it turns toxic. In plant, this crystalline protein does not cause any damage or no harmful. It does not dissolve because the plant do not have alkaline pH. So, scientists have isolated the Bt gene from Bacillus thuringiensis and introduced in the plant. In plant, the Bt gene undergo transcription and translation to form the crystalline protein. The synthesized crystalline protein get accumulated in the plant. Since the plant don't have alkaline pH, the crystalline protein can't be dissolved. When the larval stage of the pest, that is the caterpillar, feeds on the plant, the protein gets into the gut of the caterpillar larva. The gut of the larva is alkaline in nature, so the protein turns toxic. The protein binds to the epithelial cells of the gut. The protein creates the perforation or puncture on the epithelial cells. Through the punctured cells, the water enters into the cell. So the cell ruptures and the larva gets killed. When the larva gets killed in the middle of the life cycle, the reproductive phase of the caterpillar has been stopped. So we have destroyed the pest. In this picture, we can see the caterpillar larva feeds on the plant sap. The plant sap have the crystalline protein. Now the protein gets into the gut of the caterpillar larva. The gut of the caterpillar larva is alkaline in nature so that the protein turns toxic. The activated toxic binds to the receptor subsequently inserted into the membrane and cause leakage of the ions and small molecules. So the cell wall is punctured which leads to the water entry. So the cells last ruptures and the larva get killed. This picture shows the Ti plasmid to form Bt crop. Using this RDNA technology, scientists have developed many plants like Bt cotton, Bt brinjal, Bt tobacco and Bt soya bean. Bt cotton has been used in India for the last so many years. It was introduced in 2002. Since then, we are using the pest resistant plant. This is how we use Bt gene to resist the pest resistant plants. 
Let us see another example in the same agricultural field. There is a nematode, its name is Melanogyne incognitia. It is a common pest in tobacco plant. So, let us see how to obtain nematode resistant tobacco plant. This technique is known as RNA interference. How does it work? In all eukaryotes, there is a defense mechanism which works by RNA interference. In all eukaryotes, to defend there, the double stranded RNA is going to act as a defense mechanism. Scientists have isolated the genes that are responsible for the growth of the nematode. The isolated growth gene is introduced into the tobacco plant through agrobacterium mediated gene transfer. This gene undergo transcription and translation and forms double stranded RNA which is the defense mechanism of the eukaryote. If that nematode enters the tobacco plant, they will have to grow and multiply. For that, they have to undergo transcription and translation. They will transcribe to synthesis mRNA. Once the mRNA is formed, this double stranded RNA will go and bind to the mRNA. The double stranded RNA and mRNA are complementary to each other so that the double stranded RNA has been silenced by interfering the mRNA. If the mRNA is not translated, the protein responsible for the growth of the particular nematode will not be produced. So, the nematode will stop growing. If they stop growing at last, due to starvation, they start to die. This figure shows the mechanism of RNA interference in nematodes. Here, we can see another application in example 3. Here, the scientists are producing hirudin with the help of RDNA technology by introducing the gene in the plant Brassica napis. Hirudin is an anticoagulant which is naturally present in the saliva of bleach. We use hirudin to preserve blood for longer time to prevent coagulation. We can keep the blood for 3 to 4 hours before performing the test in the laboratories. So, the scientists isolated the hirudin producing gene and introduced into the Brassica napis plant. Inside the plant, the hirudin gene undergo transcription and translation to produce a protein called hirudin. Hirudin accumulate in the plant mainly in the seeds. So, from the seeds, the extracted oil may contain hirudin. This is the cheaper method of extracting the hirudin from Brassica napis. This picture shows the production of hirudin from the Brassica napis. Next example is flavor saver tomato. When we purchase tomato, we prefer red and tight tomato. If the farmers plug the preferred tomato to be red, by the time of its transportation to the market, will lose its tightness. So, no one will purchase it. So, the shelf life of the tomato will be short. So, scientist McGregor developed a technique to prolong the shelf life of the tomato. We all know that the tomato's outer surface is made up of pectin. There is a natural enzyme produced by the tomato called PG, polygalactorinase. This enzyme will dissolve the outer surface of the tomato and turn them wrinkled. So, the scientists isolated the PG gene and they obtained the mRNA. Then, using reverse transcriptase, they created complementary DNA, that is cDNA. The complementary DNA binds to the mRNA. That means the enzyme that has to be produced has been silenced so that the PG gene will not interfere on the wall of the pectin. So this will help to prolong the ripening of the particular tomato. Tomato remains fresh for a long time. This picture shows the mechanism of producing flavor saver tomato. Golden rice is a variety of rice produced through genetical engineering to biosynthesize beta-carotene, a precursor of the vitamin. 
Golden rice is genetically modified organism in the edible part of the rice and be created using RDNA technology. Nowadays we know that many people suffer from vitamin A deficiency. So for that purpose golden rice is produced. Beta carotene synthesizing gene has been introduced into the rice. The beta carotene is yellowish in color. That's why the name golden rice. Beta carotene will be synthesized in the rice. Beta carotene is a precursor for the synthesis of vitamin A. So it starts accumulating in the rice. When a deficient person starts taking the rice, the deficient will be taken care of. Thank you. In the next video, we will learn about the gene transfer technique. Want to know more about these topics? Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe our channel.